So one of the things I learned during my research was there was a distinction made in the industry between a reissue and a revival. So uh, a reissue of a film was a national reissue. There were new marketing materials that the studio made for the film, and it would release it. Uh, and during the, the 1930s, uh, a studio might release, I don't know, one or two movies nationally as a re reissue each year. Uh, but then you also had revival screenings, okay? And these were actually far more frequent. This was uh, an individual exhibitor who said, hey, you know, I'd like to screen this Clark Gable movie from three years ago. Uh, they'd contact the local film exchange if the exchange had a print. Then they'd ship it. And then very importantly, the exhibitor was able to book that three-year-old Clark Gable film for uh, a very low rate. So basically, they were able to pay uh, B-movie rental type rates for what was an A picture from two or three years ago. Uh, so it was a, a conservative and calculated business move on the part of an exhibitor. Um, they knew what the quality of this old film was. They didn't know what the, the quality of the new film was. Um, and what's interesting is during this decade of the 1930s, you know, the Great Depression is going on. This is the decade where the double feature really becomes this institution. Uh, and that means the demand for film content is huge, right? If you're an exhibitor showing two movies a night and you're changing your program two or three times a week, you need a lot of product and you need to be able to book it cheaply. Uh, and so reissues and revivals were really nice uh, in that context. And they were booked a great deal, um, particularly as the decade went on and there were earlier sound films that could be uh, reissued or brought back as revivals. But there's also some examples of successful silent films uh, during that era. Um, the most significant probably being Ben-Hur.